<laughs> Welcome to Gutter Trash, episode 208. The skin I live in. My name is Eric. I'm Jason. How's it going? It is awesome possum. What? How about you? Uh, did you say awesome possum or awesome, awesome twice? I said awesome possum. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way we prefer it in this household. Oh, yeah. Awesome. You say one thing and then an animal. <laughs> <laughs> sure we do. Have a bottom list. That's the way we do it. Mm. We're just enjoying waters tonight. Huh? Yeah, we are. Big old tall waters. Yeah. Cool right from your grocer's freezer. <laughs> you can't. You can't beat the water. No, you can't. No. Nope. It's the best there is. I enjoy water. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I drink water all the time. Same here. I, uh, in fact, I uh, uh, I think I've, I've, I've made allusions to this before, maybe, but uh, back in May, I stopped drinking everything but water. Yeah. Uh, not, not but water, but, you know, <laughs> also <laughs> water, yes. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, you still drink butt water. I know, of course. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah no, I uh, I realized that I needed to make a, a massive change in my lifestyle, and I figured one of the easiest things that I could do uh, is uh, definitely uh, drinking only water. Uh, it starts the ball rolling. Yeah. With yeah. an easy thing. And, I mean, I've failed in every other single way, but uh, I still pretty much only drink water now. Nice. Uh, in the past month or so, I've allowed myself to have a cup of coffee in the morning. And on the weekends, I've allowed myself to have a diet of cola. But for the most part, it's just all water all the time. Except for the rare instances, like when I had a beer, uh, on Friday. Right. Well, But I was trying to kill brain cells, so. (laughs) Most people who drink beer are. Um... Well, I don't know if they're trying, but... Right, yeah, they're not trying. Not on purpose. But they don't mind. Exactly. Yeah. Right, yeah. They're like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. It's just a happy side effect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just a bonus. Yeah, you get you forget stuff. Yeah. And who doesn't want to forget? Uh, In this day and age, come on, seriously. So yeah. But, uh, yeah. So, yeah. Here we are. Doing this again. A late night podcast here. Sort of. For it, us. It got pretty late on us yeah. here. Uh, we didn't realize the movie was five hours long. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not sure how the time got away from us did, that fast. Did it? Was the movie like extra long? It was two hours. Two hours, okay. Yeah, that's it. Hmm. That, that's your standard movie length. Maybe we stopped once so I could pee. Right. I don't, yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure, but yeah, it is now like a quarter to eleven right now. Yeah, and we met at like six thirty or yeah, so. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Usually, this is the point in time where we're wrapping up, and I am going to bed. Yeah, uh, this is uh, this is messed up. <laughs> God, speaking of messed up, um, yeah, I don't know. Sure, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Okay, before we start, though, I wanted to say something. Okay, I, I feel like this movie cannot properly be reviewed without lots of spoilers. Okay. So I was thinking maybe we could spend the first few minutes spoiler-free and then have a point where we're like, from here on, there are spoilers. So if, if it right. sounds good at this point and something you might want to see, then, you know, when we get to that point, we can say, leave the room now. Or, right. Or turn this off. I I would uh, agree with you 100% that we cannot talk about this movie without spoiling it. Uh, I mean, yeah, well, I, I'm sure we could. But it would be very vague and, like, yeah. there would be giant sections of the film we couldn't really even talk explore. About, right? Yeah. Um, I, well, let's let's go with this. Because I think we did this for Moon. Um... I think people should see this movie, mm-hmm. and then come back to us <laughs> and hear the review. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, what, but what if 
like someone's like, I've never heard of this movie. Mm, I don't. How do I know that I want to go back to this? Maybe we could give them a little bit. Okay. And then they can right. decide, like, you know, because I mean, you know, people some all the time people tell me, hey, you got to see this movie, and I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah well, because yeah, let's go ahead and say this. This movie not going to be for everyone. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can think of. Like, 50% of the people I'll, I'm friends with even <laughs> would be like, what? What the hell? Yeah. Okay. So, so all right. No, I'm with you. Okay. So, so this movie, The Skin yeah. I Live In, it's a, it's a Spanish-language film uh, directed by Pedro Almodovar, uh, who apparently is a very big director in Spain. Mm. Large man, you say? Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I've heard of a couple of his movies. Uh, I actually own one. I've owned it for years and have still yet to ever watch it. Oh, really? Called uh, Volver. Oh, okay. With uh, Penelope Cruz. Yeah, yeah, I haven't seen that either, but I, I've seen trailers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in fact, I, there was like a span of six months where I went to the Neon a lot, and it seemed like that trailer was yeah. in front of every That's movie. where I've seen the trailers. Yeah. <laughs> it's like maybe like. They're like, hey, shit, where, where's all these other trailer reels we were supposed to get in the mail? <laughs> oh, well, just run over there again. Yeah, yeah, that was, like, in front of every movie I yeah. saw for, like, a year there. But, uh, okay, well, I, I didn't catch the name. I didn't recognize the name. Yeah. Uh, so, so this movie uh, stars uh, Antonio Banderas, which um, I'm going to have to thank you for picking this movie. Just so that I can spend the rest of this episode saying, Antonio Banderas. <laughs> it's kind of a fun name to say. It is a totally fun name to say. It rolls around there in your tongue. I uh, I used to work at a movie theater, and uh, like right around the time when I started working there, uh, uh, Desperado oh, came out. Oh, yeah. And uh, so, so from that point on... Like, like that movie pretty much blew him up as, as like a major star. Oh, yeah. And so he was like everywhere for a while. And just every time that he was in something new, we would all just go around and say, I am Tony Banderas. And uh, so. Uh, Can't say as I blame you. Yeah. And uh, of course, now he is the voice of the Nasal Next B. What? The Nasal Next B. What's that? It's uh, like some sort of nasal spray. And he is an animated bee that uh, pitches nasal mix. Really? Yeah. Like, so, okay, okay. So it's not when you use the product, you don't hear his voice. No. Just yeah. on the commercial. Yeah. Okay. What? <laughs> well, you're like, he's the voice of the nasal X bee, and yeah. I, I didn't know there was a bee nasal in the commercial. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, wouldn't that be nice? Every time you spray it, you hear his voice say yeah. nasal mix. Nasal mix. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Tony Van Nurse. So, uh, Tony Van Nurse is in this movie. Um, okay, uh, this movie is, in a way, a Frankenstein movie. Okay. I hadn't thought about that, but, uh, yeah. It is, uh, the, the basic gist of the movie is Antonio Banderas, uh, is a mad scientist mm -hmm. who is doing, uh, horrific experiments. But it's not like you would think mad science. No, yeah, yeah. Like, it, like it's, he's a, it, it's a subdued type of mad science. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of, kind of keeps it, it's like a hobby because he's a, he's a surgeon. Yeah. Plastic surgeon. Yeah. Uh, for his career. But sort of in his off time, he does these other. Experiments. Well, you know, doctors uh, sometimes do like you know their own private research and right. to, you know, because I mean, you know, uh, even even a plastic surgeon can be a humanitarian and, and want to uh, and not just want to put you know giant tits in a you know some old rich lady. Oh, right. you know, they're they're actually there to you know try to help people, like burn victims. And exactly. Yeah. Right. And that's essentially the type of plastic surgeon he is. Yeah. Uh, and so he, he conducts some uh, off-the-books experiments in order to, you know, help further humanity. And other things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he kind of maybe has his own agenda as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
and it kind of plops you out in the middle of the of the the story and it's one of these things where like you're like what the fuck is going on this is crazy yeah and then like half maybe a third of the way through the movie you get this big flashback to lead you up to why he's doing these crazy fucked up things yeah it's um yeah it's definitely not linear um in fact because, uh, cause, yeah, about, uh, I think, a third of the way into the movie, uh, yeah, we, we start getting the flashback scene. And at that point, like, the flashback is going on, and, like, that lasts... Like, I mean, the majority of the movie is the flashback. Yeah, right, right. Uh, and, like, about... Just before the big reveal, uh, there was a point where it's like, why are we watching this? Exactly. I agree. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I'd say for the first half an hour, I was like, all right, I picked another stinker. Yeah. No, I didn't think that. I did. Oh, I did. Okay. I did not think that at all. Uh, no, and, and like, honestly, like, I was on board, like, that first half hour. Uh, you know, because cause I wanted to see where this was going. Uh, and then we get the flashback, and at that point, it was just like, well, why are we doing this? Go back to the thing that the movie was about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the flashback ended up being what the, the movie thing, was about. Right, yeah. Right. Uh, and so, so that's, like, where my major complaint comes through in this movie, is that, like, in, like, it, the movie totally corrects itself, and makes my complaints null and void but at the same time I like like before that point I'm thinking this is just another thing where they, the movie just can't focus on what it's supposed to be right. and it's just given this you know extraneous flashback to <laughs> nothing of importance and the listener will, will know that if there's one thing we hate it's things that can't focus on a point <laughs> drives us crazy hey we may not be able to focus <laughs> But we just want the things that we pay for to, right, right. You know, to be focused. Because uh, no one's paying for this. But I think this was like a... like a, I'm thinking it was like, you know how the Star Wars trilogy started on episode 4? I think it was the same kind of thing where they were like, this is the point where we want people to be dropped into the movie and be like, what the fuck is going on? Right. And, and I think I think that was probably smart because if it was all completely linear... Oh yeah, it like, would, yeah, it wouldn't yeah. have built up correctly, and yeah, yeah, the, uh, yeah, it would not have worked at all as an effective movie. Maybe at this point, we should tell people to to decide whether they want to go see it because I feel like we're being we're dancing around things vaguely, and I think we're doing okay so far. Uh, well, maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> I, I feel like we're being vague enough that people are like, well, just what? Huh? What? So maybe we could just go ahead and say, we're about to spoil some things. We're going to ruin this entire movie for you, right about now. So yeah, if you think you want to see it, and we both, I'm guessing, think you should see it. I liked it a lot. Yeah. Uh, I thought this was a very good movie that... Very different. Very different. Uh, it lags in the middle a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, but what I thought was lagging about it completely fixes itself yeah yeah because of what we're about to spoil right so so uh, spoilers are seconds away yeah so we we so you like this movie too i did like this movie uh i like this movie uh we would recommend it to anyone who enjoys uh uh not not a horror but it's it's got horrorish elements to it yeah it's there's bizarre it's bizarre it's super dark uh, it's, it's, uh, uh, pretty twisted. Yeah, twisted is a great word. Yeah. Uh, but, it, but not twisted, like, yeah, like, I did Like, uh, it's not, yeah, like, like, like don't I go in expecting, like, blood and guts I and didn't gore. feel dirty, like, how, no, like, yeah, when we watched, uh, Human Centipede and I just wanted to, like, <laughs> vomit and then go shower for the rest of the week. Yeah, it's nothing like that. Yeah. Some similar themes. Similar, but done in a much... Yeah, yeah, tasteful or more tasteful way. This is the cl this is the classy human centipede. <laughs> it's the highbrow human centipede. <laughs> yeah.
It's shake and not stir it, human centipede. Yeah. You know, actually, you're not supposed to shake a martini. It oh, yeah. It bruises it. The olives? Uh, yeah. No, the, 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 the alcohol. Oh. Yeah. You can bruise alcohol? Uh-huh. Hmm. Uh, so James Bond has it wrong. Oh, as course. always. <laughs> so, anyway, yeah, we are... Uh, we, we liked this movie, obviously. And now we are going to ruin it if you haven't seen it. So, okay. pause this. Come back to us at uh, whatever point in time we are here. At least watch the trailer real quick and then yeah, yeah. decide whether you want to watch it. Yeah, yeah there you go. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, let's uh, let's take a, uh, a five-second breather here. <laughs> okay, so you're you're either uh, with us or uh, you you went ahead and you watched the movie and you're with us again. So let's do this. All right. Um, so the basic plot of this is uh, Antonio Banderas is uh, a scientist, a doctor, plastic surgeon who we meet his patient, who who is this woman. We don't know why she's there really at first. She's in his home. She's in his home. Uh, he he owns like a castle, uh, and he also has his own uh, laboratory and. Uh, uh, operating room uh, in there, right? Like we all want. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's how I want to go. The laboratory. Uh, yeah, so we we meet this woman who is in. Uh, she wears like this flesh colored body stocking, like like from toe to neck, like she's completely covered. Uh, and she's kept in a locked room. Yeah. And, which at first I thought she was like it was some germ thing uh-huh. where like she couldn't be around people right. like because of germs or something like that's what I was thinking but no. it turns out that's not it nope uh, so yeah so so yeah he's treating this woman we don't know what for uh, uh, at one point she like like when we realize that uh, she is in the same house that he is in because uh, we meet him and like at a a lecture, and he's talking about ver- burn victims and, and treating them, and then doing face transplants and stuff like that. Right. Uh, so, so we know, you know, what what sort of work he does. Uh, but uh, he basically monitors her from like every room in his house, uh, and uh, also keeps her drugged up with opium. Right. Uh, <laughs> and likes to watch her uh, do things in the nude. Yeah. Yeah. And so uh, she, he goes to go give her some, some more opium and uh, discovers that she uh, had made an attempt to kill herself. So he, he treats her wounds. And uh, we discover that he's basically made a synthetic skin, which he has uh, transplanted onto her, uh, which uh, the skin is, like, impervious to harm. Yeah. Uh, can't be burned or... Can't get bitten by, by bugs. Right. It's like a super hard strong skin but like also super soft right right yeah it's it's, it's like a superhero skin sort of yeah yeah yeah. and then speaking of superheroes we meet a dude in a tiger costume (laughs) (laughs) yeah i wonder if that was like there to like add a little like you know relieve a little tension there like i don't know you know because i mean he ends up being a pretty intense character that you know one of the worst characters like you know like uh, as far as morally, one of the worst characters in the film. Yeah. But when you first see him, you're like, oh, that's a cute little tiger man. Yeah. <laughs> Running around in a tail and a cape and a mask. Yeah, yeah. that's adorable. Moon and a camera. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what a scamp. <laughs> <laughs> and then darkness happens. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so this character shows up and pretty much kicks off what the rest of the movie is about, sort of. Yeah. Uh, just, well, I mean, his actions sort of set the rest of the movie in motion. Because uh, he, he basically, he, he is the, the, the son of uh, the maid, or the, the, the housekeeper, or whatever. Right. Uh, who also is Antonio's, Antonio Banderas' character, uh, mother as well. Uh, illegitimate sons. Uh, but this guy's a criminal. And, uh, it's like a jewelry store thief on the run or something. Yeah, something like that. I kind of missed that a little bit. 
but uh, did know that. Uh, uh, well, we come to find out later that he uh, he basically sort of stolen uh, Antonio Banderas' wife and then got into like a huge car accident which he escaped from and uh, his wife uh, nearly burned to death but didn't and that sort of is what motivates Banderas' character to you know create this synthetic skin right uh so anyway so this this character uh Zeka I think his name is yeah uh, tiger Man, the tiger. <laughs> they call him the tiger. Yeah. yeah. Uh, finds uh, this woman locked up in the room and uh, uh, thinks that uh, because she looks exactly like uh, uh, Antonio Baroness' uh, dead wife and his uh, his mistress. Right. So he uh, he goes to get her and uh, breaks her out and then uh, basically rapes her. Right. Uh, when uh, Banderas comes home and then kills him. Uh, and so, uh, he, he saves this woman, and, uh, then after the cleanup, we get some exposition from the, uh, the matron, uh, Banderas and this woman, uh, sleep together. Which I thought was weird. It's a little weird, yeah. I mean, you know, you're, you're, you're even if it is your house prisoner, right. uh, if someone gets raped that day... They yeah. probably don't want to have sex that night. Yeah, yeah. I would imagine. Yeah, I would imagine that as well. Uh, but but they don't. They don't actually right. have sex. They, they just uh, fall asleep together. Uh, and and then, then the flashback. So the flashback starts, uh, which is seemingly completely unrelated to anything that is happening <laughs> in this movie. Right. Yeah, it seems like you're like, oh, okay, all of a sudden... That's a whole different story about these two people. Right. Uh, so basically the flashback happens and we, we find out that... Uh, uh, I'm, I'm actually tired of saying Antonio Banderas now. <laughs> uh, his character's name is Robert, so... Uh, or Roberto. Roberto, yes. yeah. So, uh, Robert uh, <laughs> has a daughter, uh, we discover who uh, witnessed her, her mother's death, uh, and so was very uh, emotionally fragile. Uh, and so we were, we're at this party where, where she is uh, attempting to, to be social again. And she's loaded with every drug in the cabinet, basically. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, well, but it's all prescription. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's all like antidepressants and, yeah, yes. Uh, so, uh, well, basically she gets raped. By, by some dude. Uh, and uh, Antonio Banderas finds her, and uh, she she sort of freaks out and thinks that he is the one who actually raped her. Well, it's weird, too, because that whole scene, it seems like, you know, they're, like, giggling and walking in the woods together and, like, making right. out, and all of a sudden... Um, she freaks out. Yeah, like, in the middle... I mean, it almost seems like he wasn't... He wasn't raping her, but she like is so drug addled that like right. like as they're like starting to have sex, <clears throat> she just like has this freak out. Yeah, she she has a massive anxiety attack, and mm. uh, yeah, yeah, she, she's clearly not in her right mind anyway. Right, and uh, but you know, I guess you know the second that uh, a woman starts trying to push you off of her. And uh, and you're still inside of her. I guess that's rape at that point. See, I always go the third time she tries to push you off. <laughs> like I, I figure the first two, she's a woman. She doesn't know what she's talking about. <laughs> no, that was that was poor comedy. Yeah, was sorry, right. yeah. poor comedy. Sorry. Sorry. Right. Um, no, yeah, but I mean, yeah, she like in the in the film, like I really did as a viewer get the sense that you know she was in, into this guy and right, she was yeah, like making yeah. out and real. And, like, even she was like, oh, all right, let's have sex. And then right. as soon as, like, they started having sex. She started getting second thoughts. Yeah, yeah, right. And, and then, yeah, of course, you know, he should not continue. Right. right. Um, uh, but then, like, she she bites him. She bites his hand, and then he winds up, like, punching her in the face and completely knocking her out in one punch. Right. Uh, then uh, just freaks out and, like, puts her clothes back on and then leaves and then uh robert finds her like you know, 
minutes later. And, uh, and he sees the, the dude uh, yeah, kind of yeah. fleeing the scene on his moped. Yep. It was an actual motorcycle. An actual motorcycle. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And it looks kind of crappy, though. No, it was a tiny motorcycle. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely not a manly motorcycle. No. Yeah. Rapids aren't real men, that's why. Exactly. They don't deserve real he motorcycles. He was also a tiny dude, too. He was a tiny dude. He looked uh, kind of womanly, in fact. Uh, a little bit, uh, but I was also going to say, uh, like, the Spanish David Spade. <laughs> yeah. yeah. His hair is less annoying, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but it looked just as fake. Yeah. And he had uh, the same type of shitty uh, goatee. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I wore that goatee for many years. Uh, I'm still wearing it. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so, yeah, so then... Uh, like, like it kind of becomes non-linear even more from here. Like, we eventually discover that uh, the daughter, like, gets locked up in a psychiatric hospital, and she basically freaks out whenever there's a man in the room, uh, especially her, you know, uh, her father. Right. Who, who she does really think, you know, attacked her. Right, because he was the one who found her minutes later, and right. she just associated the two. Right. And uh, because of that, she winds up uh, killing herself. Uh, she jumps out of a window uh, the same way her mother died. Uh, and so then the story starts focusing on the the rapist, the the the, the dude. And uh, and at this point, I'm still wondering why the hell we're watching this. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I know, right? I was at this point, I was like. Oh boy, I'm yeah. bored, and this is bad. Um, so yeah, so so we focus on this dude, and uh, he, like he realizes that he's in trouble, and he he's making sort of vague mentionings to uh, a woman that he works with uh, for his mother that that he might have to disappear. Right, and. Uh, and then uh, we see uh, Antonio Banderas wearing a, uh, a fake face uh, run him off the road and kidnap him, <laughs> uh, causing him to disappear. Yeah, he catches him in the middle of the night by himself on his moped and just... Right. Or mo- motorbike. Yeah. Motorbike. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, he gets him in his uh, van. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, he's got a van. He uh, stages uh, like the bike crash to... to uh, go off a cliff, right? Uh, but then he uh, kidnaps the kid and uh, keeps him chained up in a, in a dungeon. Kind of starves him a little, a little bit. Starves him, uh, gives him some water, but then he uh, he does feed him a little bit and washes him, and uh, uh, but but still keeping him imprisoned. Uh, and uh, in a in a very tense scene, shaves him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, with a straight razor. Which, uh, I'm not, not a fan of that. Mm, no. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, and then preps him for surgery. Uh, I think you can see where this is going, people. Yeah. So he, uh, he gets his, uh, his surgery team in and, uh, they all, uh, get to work on this, uh, this kid that he kidnapped who, who he's, you know, obviously. You know, falsifying records and everything about. Um, and it, when he, the kid wakes up, uh, wants to know what what uh, what has happened to him, and it uh, uh, they gave him a vagina. Yeah, <laughs> and, and they took away his penis. Yeah. They, did, they didn't just like, right, yeah, add no, a vagina yeah, into yeah. the mix. Yeah, they replaced mm-hmm. one for the other. And and by the time we should say by the time he wakes up, the other doctors are gone. So yeah, yeah. like they all thought like he had signed away on these papers, right, and like right, he was yeah. just he was just out by the time they got there. And right, right. So yeah, everybody thinks it's kosher, uh, but it's not. No, <laughs> um, and uh, gets worse from there. <laughs> yeah, he kind of. Uh, yeah. I don't, huh? I don't even know how to describe. Well, uh, the, the, he teaches him all about uh, using uh, dildos in order to deepen his vagina. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he gives him makeup. Yeah. Uh, well, well, uh, that's that's uh, after the fact. 
because uh, he keeps him around for a while and like, examines him, and then uh, uh, the doctor then continues more experiments on him, completely changing him into a woman. Yeah. Uh, gives him, uh, he basically operates on his entire body. All right, changes his voice. Changes his voice, uh, his, his face. Uh, puts him in like this weird mask thing that that molds his uh, face, and that's when he starts making him wear the uh, the 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 body suit, the body suit, in order to to keep the shape of of his new body, basically. Uh, and we uh, he, he makes an escape attempt, but uh, that's that's uh, when. Banderas basically starts locking him in. I love that scene too. It was so crazy and intense because, like this, this man or or woman now, right. she's like dressed all in black, but she has this fucking crazy, like mask. Yeah, yeah and you can see her eyes and her, like a bit of her nose and mouth peeking out, but it's like this weird shaped like white plastic mask that wraps around her face, there. like a hockey mask with like you know facial features revealed right right and uh yeah it's like a really weird scene and it's just i mean it's like visually interesting just like the two of them because he's just like this rich looking dude right and she's like this fucking crazy <laughs> freak now right uh and so yeah so then we, we we start i mean yeah so so this dude who raped his daughter is this girl that we have been spent, you know, like the first third of this movie with. Right, you're like, oh shit. Yeah. That's yeah. how these two stories are intertwining. Yeah, and that's when the interest started coming back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was like, wow, this is fucked up. Uh, it, and it's like it's like a soap opera at that point, you're like, oh yeah. It's so ridiculous because, I mean, if you think about it, like Antonio Banderas and that Zika Tiger Zoot guy are brothers, you find out. Like, yeah, yeah. And she's like, oh, of course, they're brothers, and then and then, like, there's all this weird, like, kidnappings and rapes and, yeah, yeah. you know, just... It, wow, it really is, yeah. Yeah, it's like, a, it's like an awesome... It's like Twin Peaks was an awesome soap opera. Right. And I think this was, like, a really dark and, like, interesting soap opera, too. Yeah, yeah. But as a movie instead of a... Right, movie. obviously. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and uh, like I said, it is kind of like a Frankenstein story. In which he, he has basically uh, created this this monster, right? Who uh, you know uh, kind of turns on him, you know, and, and uh, he he sort of starts neglecting a little bit. Uh, but I mean, it, ah, it's weird. It's fucked up. Yeah, <laughs> but it, but eventually she seems to like really take a uh, yeah. She she gets a very uh, like a you know, is it Patty Hearst. Was, was that the the woman? Yeah, right, right. Uh, like a yeah, Stockholm, Stockholm syndrome. syndrome. Yeah. 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 Well, I think the yoga helped. She started learning yoga. Yeah. She learned to relax. Uh, did some sculpting and then uh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah started some, some artwork, some artwork and writing on the walls. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and yeah, she started like eventually just seeming to really, really dig Roberto. Yeah, and also smoking a lot of opium. Yeah, that helps too. Yeah. <laughs> Yoga and opium, it's, it's, it's basically like drinking chamomile tea when you get yeah. those two together. <laughs> Try it, kids, you'll yeah, sleep like opium. a baby. Yeah. Yeah, oh, wow. <laughs> wow, we may have been, uh, yeah, we might be onto something there. Like a million dollar idea, that could be better than Pilates. <laughs> <laughs> Just smoke some opium every day at work and do some yoga. Yeah. That's the ticket. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, so, uh, so, yeah, that, that that's, that's sort that's, of, the, that, that's that is uh, the main reveal, yeah. yeah, uh, which, which, yeah, it was, was the biggest, uh, stumbling block for me as far as, like, enjoying this movie entirely, right, which, you know, like, I did enjoy the movie, like, like I really did like it, you know, by the end of it, you know, but, man, like, that, that, Middle thirty minutes or so. Yeah, like, what is happening? I, it's ballsy too for them to be like, you know, when they're watching, you know, watching the rough cuts or whatever. Be like, man, I don't know if people are going to be on board with this. Like, it's ballsy of them to just go ahead and like, well, this is how we want to tell this story instead of like right. making it a little more like palatable. Yeah, yeah, because it's yeah. At first, I mean, it just seems weird and like 
uninteresting even in yeah, spots, yeah. but but that's the way they wanted to tell a story, and it, and it, it and works. It pays off if yeah. you hang in there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think that's the that is the thing that that if if there was no payoff or if the payoff stumbled in any sort of way, that I think the entire movie was hanging on to that. Like like if it was right. Yeah, like it's completely reliant on that, and they they managed to pull it off. But uh, I think if there was just like any part of it that didn't work, then you know, it probably we would probably be having a very different discussion yeah. about this. Uh, well, and like, but on the other side of the coin, I really did not like the way it ended. Like it just kind of very very end. yeah yeah like the last yep. scene yeah, I, which I don't know maybe we shouldn't spoil that. Part, but yeah, give give them something to. to it just it, it ends on two words and no reaction to it. Yeah, it seems like, like you know, like it almost feels like there was a a reel that like this is a really old film that they discovered and they could never find the last reel of the film. Right. Yeah. Because you're like, oh, okay, huh? Well, even uh, you know, speaking of old movies, like uh, I've seen quite a few old movies where, like, the ending of it like is just. You know, like whatever, like the major climax of a movie is, you know, and then just there's sort of a quip, and then yeah. like the end, right, right. You know, and like a lot of old movies do that, and this definitely does the same thing. Yeah, it was like strange. There's no, there's no final wrap up, uh, but and like normally that doesn't bother me. Well, I guess sometimes it does bother me, but. uh what the last scene is building to? Yeah, there, there needs to be just something else. It, it almost seemed like it should have ended like either like five minutes before it ended or like fifteen minutes after it ended. I agree with you one hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It should have. Yeah, if not expanded past where it did end, it should have ended right before that final scene happens. R- right, because it seems like. Like they give you, the, they could give you the little taste of like what's to come in right. that final scene, and you're like, oh, you know, you can play it all out in your mind. Yeah, you're like, yeah. But but instead, they like sort of like just push the scene a little further, and like, y- you know, you watch this awkward like little thing start to happen. Right. But they like don't know how to end it, so they just end it. Yeah. yeah. They just roll credits. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I definitely think it would have been better had we not seen that scene at all. Yeah. Uh, because. Yeah, in your own mind, like, like, uh, I'll, I'll say this, uh, 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 yeah, go ahead, spoil it, or spoil uh, it. I don't want to entirely spoil it, but, but, uh, I'll say the woman, Vera, Vincent, uh, the, yeah, Vera, who's previously the rapist, right, yeah, uh, she escapes, uh, from, the uh, the clutches of Antonio Banderas. <laughs> <laughs> you had to do it one last time. Yeah. And, uh, she, we, we see her, uh, being dropped off by a cab and, and we see, you know, uh, her mother's store. Uh, and that would have been a perfect place to end. Right exactly. there. Exactly. Right there. Cause, cause yeah, cause in your head, you're, you're already drawing your own conclusions. Yeah. And it could go either way. You're like, oh, does she like just look at it longingly and then yep. run away or does she go in? Like, yeah. That is the perfect ambiguous ending. Yeah. Uh, just like with, uh, you know, uh, I, I didn't enjoy the movie on a second view, but, uh, Inception, mm-hmm. you know, with the, the, the spinning top. Right. And how, to this day, people are like, well, what the fuck happened? Yeah, hey, yeah. Hey, guess what? Make up your own mind. Right, exactly. Yeah. Like, that's the fun part. Exactly. And, and this movie could have done that, but then we, we see more of that scene afterwards, and then... But but not enough to get a satisfying conclusion, right? Yeah, because we're. I mean, if we're already going to see it, then let's play it out. Right? Exactly. Yeah. But I wonder if that's maybe supposed to be sort of like you said, how old movies sort of. I don't know. It had it had a feel like 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 right before the credits would roll on something from the forties right, or something. Yeah. And uh, I wonder if that's supposed to be an homage to that, or if it had a sort <clears throat> of a cheesy just exposition vomit. But they had, like, because there's, like, here's what happened, blah, blah, blah. And, like, then the credits roll, and it's, like, that was, that was kind of soap opera soap opera E too. So, right. Yeah. And I, I just said, and you in Spanish, which is weird, because <laughs> I said E2. Yeah. This movie was Spanish. Anyway, I'm sorry. 
Um, <laughs> but yeah, I wonder if that was like some sort of nod to something, or I like I'd be curious to to read, you know, an right. interview with the director about just I don't know his yeah. decisions and. On, well, I guess this is also based on a book. Yeah, so, like, I know. I, like, I was thinking. I saw that. I was like. Yeah, the, based on the book, and I was like, I would love to read the last chapter of that book, <laughs> you know, <laughs> just to see what what it's supposed to end like. Maybe. Right. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. But I mean, yeah, I, overall, like, I mean, yeah, like, like it is a matter of of just being patient through the middle portion of this movie, uh, which I, I guess, sadly, you and I are are lacking in patience. <laughs> <laughs> As we were getting super annoyed with it, I was annoyed even like towards the beginning. I was just like, "Oh, this is maybe just a piece of crap." <laughs> but uh, yeah, I was on board at the beginning. I, I was really on board. Uh, you know, like I was weirded out, and like I didn't know what the fuck was going on. But I, I was with it. It had just the a right amount of this is fucked up for me. There. Like because I like things that are a little bizarre, but not like. <laughs> Like parading around how bizarre it is, like you know, like hey, you know, look how bizarre we are. Like that turns me off right away. Right. But I like it whenever there's a little bizarreness to it. And this movie definitely was just the right amount of bizarre. I think, like it didn't like bathe itself in bizarre, but it it didn't shy away from bizarre either. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. Overall, though, I, I did enjoy this quite a bit. Uh, but yeah, it just takes some work to get through yeah. entirely. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's it's not it's not just like a fun popcorn movie no, for no, no, you no. and your lady friend. <laughs> uh, but but yeah, if you like kind of weird, yeah, monstery kind of sexually charged, yeah. Uh, if you ever movie. want to see Antonio Banderas fuck a dude and have it <laughs> who, not be Tom Hanks, who looks like a pretty lady, who looks like a super pretty lady. Who was not Tom Hanks? Wait a minute, did that happen? Uh, yeah, they played uh, lovers in Philadelphia. Oh, okay, I was like, Antonio Banderas was not in Bosom Buddies, was he? <laughs> it was uh, Bosom Buddies, the new generation. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Yeah, yeah, pretty, pretty cool movie. Yeah, well, I do want to talk about Antonio Banderas a little bit. Oh yeah. Uh, man, what happened to that guy? What do you mean? Like 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 I said earlier, you know, uh, when when Desperado came out, that guy became a superstar. Oh yeah. And then, uh, like I was looking at his IMDb, uh, like you know, after the movie ended, and uh, other than Shrek movies, he has not done a lot. Really? I mean, he's done a lot, but stuff I've never heard of. Hmm. Uh, I just assumed he was making like you know non Hollywood movies that I hadn't heard of. I mean, I guess he is making more than a few, like, just Spanish-language movies. Uh, you know, like, he's got, uh, like, some robot movie coming out that's a Spanish-language movie. Hmm. Which, you know, they, robots are always awesome. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, like, he was in uh, Haywire, that uh, Steven Soderbergh action movie. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, oh, something else I saw him in, uh... Man, I can't even remember now. But oh yeah, he's going to be in the the Machete sequel. Oh uh, uh, yeah, awesome. But like, I mean, he's just uh, pretty much just been the voice of Puss in Boots <laughs> for like the past seven years. That's got to be a good gig, though. Well, I'm sure it's a good gig, but you know, it's like well, yeah, uh, he's know, better than that. Right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, he's a super good actor, and uh, like, like I is just like. He can't get a job in Hollywood anymore outside of, you know, voice acting right. or, you know, hmm. nasal neck commercials. Yeah, that's too bad. Yeah. Yeah, come on, Coen Brothers, get him in a movie. No, seriously. That'd be great. That'd be super awesome. Yeah, because, I mean, he's he's diverse. I mean, he oh, could, yeah. I mean, he was fucking hilarious in Four Rooms. So like, oh, yeah. That, yeah. that was my favorite part of that movie. But, um, like, it even seems like Robert Rodriguez, well, I guess not, since he's going to be in the new machete, but, you know... It, it seemed like for a while he was in every Robert Rodriguez thing, right? You know, uh, and, then, and then just stopped being in them. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe Got replaced by Danny Trejo. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Antonio Banderas wanted to like kind of squirrel himself away and prepare for his role as Puss in Boots for a while. And he was like, "No, no, no, no! I take this seriously. <laughs> I must prepare." <laughs> <laughs> and now he's back, and he's like, "All right, I'm done." 
Yeah, I don't know. Uh, but, yeah, I'd, I'd like to see him in, in more things that I don't have to read. <laughs> yeah, we had, I think, is it the last three movies we watched we yep. had to read? <laughs> um, which I don't mind. But, oh, I don't mind either, yeah. But we should definitely watch a, 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 just a straight talkie next time. Yeah, yeah, we should. <laughs> uh, I, I'm pretty sure the movie I'm, I'm going to pick uh, after next week is uh, is, is English. Yeah, so that's sweet. Okay. Uh, yeah, so, uh... uh the, the one other thing I was going to mention about this movie, it's one of those movies where, uh, as soon as you're done watching it, you sort of want to watch the beginning of it again. Like, yeah. as soon as it was over, I was like, oh man, I would really love to watch, like, the first half an hour of this one more time. Right. Like, like right as soon as the credits were rolling. You know? Right, right. So it's one of those where, like, if you like that sort of thing where, you know, you know... It sort of makes you rethink what you've just watched, yeah, you know, by yeah. the end of it. Um, those are those are fun usually. Oh yeah, yeah. And it, it was yeah, it was well done. It just there's a couple of stumbling blocks, uh, mostly just the ending, I think. Yeah, I agree. But but yeah, skin I live in, pretty good. Mm-hmm. Just just uh, takes a little effort. Yeah. yeah. All right, take a break. Sure. Yeah. All righty.
Hello there. Welcome back to Gutter Trash. Hello. What's up, buddy? Not too much. Yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. How's uh how's life treating you? Uh we shouldn't go into that. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh I'll just say it's been a bad week. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry to hear that. So if uh, if anybody really wants to know, it's on my Facebook page and my Twitter that I, I have been very sad in the past week. So we'll just leave it at that, and uh, and uh, that's it. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah. <clears throat> oh. Um. Hmm. So have you done any uh, done any, done anything in the last couple of days or anything? Uh, other than be sad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, I've, I've been doing my best to try to not be sad. Yeah, that's good. And I have found that uh, just, just spending time with friends is, is usually a pretty good cure for that. We had fun Friday night. We did. Yeah, it got ended pretty early, though. Yeah. I was yeah. very disappointed in that. I know, I was looking forward to doing some painting. Yeah, I, I totally would have done yeah. some. Yeah, yeah we were, we were going to paint uh, my girlfriend's kitchen. Yeah. After uh, drinking margaritas and beers. Yeah. Uh, she promised beer. Yeah. I was I was on board. Uh, well, but uh, I was just joking about the whole working thing. Right, right. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, she, she decided to, to just tell me to fuck off, and <laughs> so I did. <laughs> In a very polite way, though. Well, sure. She's always <laughs> polite about that. <clears throat> but the message is the same. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, yeah, I haven't really done too much out of the ordinary. Just uh, hanging around here, doing some art stuff, and uh, sitting. Yeah, I, I finished watching Cheers today. Oh, nice! All of them, all I've eleven seen. seasons. And how long? Uh, it's. Uh, I'm gonna guess it's probably been about two months. Oh, well, it's still. Yeah. I mean, it's still pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking it was less than that, but it probably was less than yeah. that. And I'm just fooling myself. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. How many? How many years of Cheers is it? That, uh, eleven years. Eleven years. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's impressive. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Uh. So yeah. Um, you? you? You do anything recently? Um. No. I. I have not, uh, I think, I've just been working at Mavericks, like, uh, yeah, like, work today, my day off to cover for someone, and, uh, yeah, just pretty much working at Mavericks, there. and doing some drawing. That's good. That's, That's about good. it. That's there. about it. Well, I know someone who has been doing something this weekend. Oh? Uh, our good friend Kurt Dins. Uh, he was at the, uh, Days of the Dead convention. And, uh... Sounds like a horror con. I believe it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I looked on their website. They they mostly seem to have uh, horror people there. Right. And for some reason, Peter Chris. <laughs> well, he wore face makeup. That's pretty oh, scary. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Is it Kitty Cat? <laughs> um... Have you ever seen uh, the skin I live in? <laughs> yeah, well, Kitty sure. Cat rapes a guy. Yeah, or rip- <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> hey, he didn't know that though. That's true. Oh wow, he died without knowing that. Yeah. Oh, that's too bad. Maybe it's for the best. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Antonio Banderas, uh, he fully knew what he was doing. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, he. Yeah. Wow, yeah, that's gross. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. Uh, but yeah, I don't care. Whatever. Hey, whatever you're into. If it makes yeah. you happy, go for if it. If you want to dress like a kitty and fuck a dude who you think is your uh, ex mistress, yeah. Whatever gets your rocks off. Exactly. Uh, so, speaking of that, Kurt uh, is uh, out <laughs> at a convention this weekend. And uh, let's say that uh, he is promoted. From uh, from listener, from uh, one time text guest, uh, to now our man on the street. Yeah, he's our Anderson Cooper. Yeah, he is. <laughs> <laughs> and just as gay. <laughs> uh, but whatever makes him happy. Yeah, that's what we're all about here. So he had sex with Peter Chris over the weekend. Yes, he did. <laughs> awesome. Uh, but it cost him extra. 
<laughs> well, of course. Yeah. You always have to pay extra for the photos and the blowjobs. <laughs> Um, no, so he, uh, yeah, he's decided that, uh, because he's going to be spending uh, a lot of time at conventions uh, over the next year or so, uh, that he's going to go out and uh, get us some uh, some sound bites. Awesome. I love sound bites. Sound bites are pretty awesome. So, uh, he, he sent us one uh, just today of uh, the, the uh, Days of the Dead convention, so we're going to go ahead and uh, listen to that right now. All right. Take it away, Kurt. Hello, this is Kurt Dins for the Gutter Trash Podcasting Network. Today, I'm at Days of the Dead in Schaumburg, Illinois, with Chris Sarandon, famous for Fright Night, one of my favorite high movies, and Princess Bride. Chris has already selected the question for today. He will read it and then answer it. What was my first non-acting job? Uh, my first non-acting job was uh, selling paperback books for a company just uh, outside of Washington, D.C. I traveled all over the Washington, D.C. area, Maryland, Virginia, uh, going into schools and setting up paperback bookstores, which was actually kind of a cool job because um, I got a lot of great books. The books were almost always uh, classics of American or world literature uh, because they were going into schools, uh, and also sometimes bestsellers that were really well-written books. So. It was a cool job. It helped pay for my graduate school tuition and my car payments as well. So it was the perfect gig at the perfect time. There you have it. Thanks very much. So that was Kurt. Hey. Kurt doing great, some stuff. Great job. Yeah, it was super awesome. <clears throat> I couldn't have done it better. Could Obvious, not have it. Obviously. Listen yeah. to us. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, that was, this was pretty much what I was hoping for when he... Like, he, he texted me to ask me if he could start doing this. And I was like, yeah, that sounds awesome. And I was like, you know, I just try to keep it under five minutes, because obviously it's just, this is our show. Oh, yeah. You know, we, we don't need him, you know, just taking over the whole right. thing. Uh, but he responded back. He was like, well, I figured it would just be 30 seconds. <laughs> even better. Yeah. But uh, uh, even this, uh, it was about a minute or so. Mm-hmm. Um, which was honestly way better than I thought would happen. Uh, and no offense to to Chris Sarandon, uh, but you know he, he's not exactly what anyone would call an A-lister. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, like the kids don't know who he is, right? Yeah, we grew up loving that movie, but oh yeah, yeah, and yeah, they'll you know definitely uh, you know Fright Night and. Princess Bride, as right. Kurt mentioned. Yeah. Uh, and he's I, been in a yeah. ton of other things, too. You know? I was just thinking of Fright Night. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But, yeah. yeah. Uh, but, you know, I thought, well, you know, Kurt talks to anyone who, who was just sort of, you know, famous, but not like super famous. You know, any kind of question would just sort of be rambly, you know. <laughs> but uh, but uh, it was pretty short and pretty sweet. And yeah. It was awesome. That was cool. Um, uh, I'm looking forward to this segment. I am too. I uh, always thought we needed a segment. Uh, we we uh, we started out hoping That's to have right. a segment. That's right. We thought we had a segment there from the beginning. Yeah, it didn't happen. Uh, so so this is yeah. So this is nice. This will be pretty cool. Oh, and, no. uh, I know Kurt goes to to horror conventions and to comic conventions. So obviously, you know, there's going to be a you know a wide variety of of uh, people you can talk to. This is just like popped in my head. So I don't know. Maybe this wouldn't work or whatever but maybe if eventually you know like if he knows exactly who he's going to talk to at a at the next convention right. maybe we could have a contest where like the listener could send the question and we oh, could yeah. pick our favorite question yeah yeah it could be uh but yeah yeah he would have to know exactly who who he's talking to right, right. uh because i think you know he, he just sort of went to see who he could talk to at uh, this one for sure right right, right. Because uh, yeah, he did ask me if like I had any requests, you know, for him to talk to, and I had two, and uh, I, I don't know if he got. Well, obviously he didn't get one of them because one of them was Peter Chris. <laughs> uh, but I don't know if he talked to to my other request or not. But uh, yeah, yeah, that, that could be a cool thing. At least uh, maybe a one time thing, right? Yeah, get a, yeah. get a, some uh, listener participation in there. Yeah, but it sounds like he he just sort of had a list of uh, pre-made questions and, and uh, you let him choose one. Yeah, right. so 
And that's awesome too. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. So so thanks to Chris Sarandon for you know giving yeah. us a minute of his time. That was really awesome of him. Yeah. I'm sure he's not listening. <laughs> but, but of course not. But yeah. Yeah. But yeah, great job. And uh, great job to Kurt. Yeah. Uh, uh, thanks to him too. Yeah, that was awesome. Uh, I I look forward to more. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, uh, 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 <laughs> you, uh, read anything uh, this week? Watch um, anything cool? I've, I've been watching some of the third season of Bored to Death and getting through that, which yeah. is awesome. I love that show. I'm actually trying to pace myself because, um, there's only like eight episodes per season. Right. And, uh, hey, so that's the last one, isn't it? As the, as far as I know, I think like, it canceled. Oh, it? did it? Okay. Yeah. Well, someone told me that they're talking about doing a movie, though. Hmm. I don't know, but you know how they've been talking about the rest of the development movie for like ten years. So. Oh, that's actually happening. Though. Yeah. Well, not the movie, but there is a fourth season coming up. Okay. Uh, but only on Netflix. Um. But yeah. But uh, I'll, uh, I was going to say that. Like, I think, I think every show that gets canceled prematurely. Uh, like almost immediately, like, well, we're gonna try to make a movie. Yeah, because yeah. the fans will rally around. Right. Like, what the fuck? And they're like, well, we're making a movie. Calm down. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, like you know, Arrested Development, and Veronica Mars, Deadwood, Carnival. You know, all these awesome shows that you know got canceled early. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, hell, even uh, Breaking Bad, which is a planned ending, they're still talking about you know possibly being a movie after. Really? Yeah. Really. Is this the last season of Breaking Bad? Then? Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, that's cool. I, I'd like to see him go out on top. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, I like a I like a show with a planned ending. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like a a finite thing. Right. Yeah. yeah. Like that's the problem with uh, you know, why most uh, Marvel and DC comics kind of suck because yeah, they're not just a story that's ongoing and like. Right. Or, I mean, there's only so many things you can do with when you're publishing the same character for 50 some years. Yeah. And I love some of those characters. Oh yeah, me too. But fucking retire them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, Mickey Mouse doesn't have cartoons. Right. Because he's just the mascot at this point. Yeah. You know, or, you know, maybe, uh, maybe Superman doesn't need, uh, three monthly books. Maybe, uh, you know, maybe doesn't. a graphic novel a year. Yeah. There you go. Like a really awesome Superman story once a year. Right. We'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> They're not listening. <laughs> no. Those fucking bastards. Hmm. Uh, yeah, so bored to death. Anyway. Yeah, watch, watch that. Uh, and actually, um, Jonathan Ames, the creator and uh, you know co-writer of the show, um, he's written a bunch of books, and I I was like meandering around at Second and Charles when I was I stopped in to go to Trader Joe's the other day. And um, it's right next door, so I went in and I was looking at their discount table, and they had a Jonathan Ames book for like three bucks. And I was like, "Yeah, oh, I'll read it." And so I, I bought it, and I took it home, and I was like looking through it, and it's you know it's a bunch of like essays and short stories, and it had the short story that Bored to Death is based on. Oh, well. I was like, "Oh, I didn't notice that even when I was buying it," and I read it, and I was like, "Wow, if I had read this first, I don't know that I would have even wanted to watch the show because, like." The story was, I mean, it was real similar. Um, like, I don't know if, like, the gist of the story is, you know, Jonathan Ames is the main character, and he's uh, just, like, puts an ad on Craigslist that he's a private detective and uh, tries to help people, and he's not, like, trained or anything. He has read a bunch of detective novels. <clears throat> and, you know, it starts out the same way, but instead of being really funny and quirky like the show, it gets really dark. I mean, like, like he's, like... Like, some guy sticks a revolver in his mouth and, like, busts out his teeth, and then, like, they kill a guy in front of him, and there's, like, the blood everywhere, and it's, like, it's, like, super dark, and it's just not as enjoyable, because what I like about it is how quirky and funny it is. Right, right. So, it was weird. I was, like, huh, oh, that's... But I, but I really enjoyed his other, uh, the other, like, essays and short stories, because they were hilarious. Right. And I was, like, this is strange. Huh. Yeah, it's weird. like he writes one serious thing and they turn it into a comedy show. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, he co-writes the show, so I mean, clearly he's like right, on board right. with the direction. So I don't know. It was, it was weird. Huh. That was weird. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's all I've been up to, really. Uh, I got a call from Doogie. He's alive. 
Hey, well, unfortunately, you need to. You haven't mentioned that he. Oh, I haven't mentioned. Him? Been, right? Oh, I'm sorry, everybody. No. <laughs> uh, Doogie disappeared like three weeks ago. <laughs> um, he he was like, I'm gonna go to work, and like, I mean, you. Know, he didn't just disappear. We we knew he was leaving town, but he just never never called us or anything because uh, we just expected, you know, like, man, maybe after like three or four days, he'll just You're give us a call. Sure, and, like, hey, hey, what's up? But yeah, it was like. Three weeks after he left, uh, you know, he finally called me while I was at work, and I usually don't even answer my phone at work, but uh, I was like, it's Doogie, I gotta, right. I gotta know what's going on. So yeah, he's alright, he's coming back for Thanksgiving, so oh, that's good. Excited good. about that. Yeah. Maybe we'll finally get to watch Under Siege Part 2 Dark Territory. <laughs> I've been, it's been sitting there, and like, the, it's on VHS, so it's probably, you know, every day it it's deteriorating. Yeah, yeah, the degradation is setting in, so he <laughs> needs to come back soon. Well, yeah, that'll be a that'll be a good uh, Thanksgiving thing. <laughs> yeah. Do. Oh yeah, you gotta get full of home cooked meals and yeah. watch a Steven Seagal movie. <laughs> yeah, well, that's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I've uh, I, uh, I caught up on the Walking Dead TV show. Sweet. So I decided it was probably about time I catch up on the comic, and so I, I dug out the uh, the two most recent trades uh, that I own, which was volumes fifteen and sixteen. I think so. Yeah. Because seventeen comes out this coming Wednesday. So yeah, I, I, I'm pretty. No, actually, it's fourteen and fifteen. Mm-hmm. Uh, so so I am missing sixteen ah. at this point. But uh, yeah, so I was I was pretty behind. Uh, it apparently has been a very long while because I do not remember a goddamn thing that happened in volume 13 <laughs> that I had to dig that out and flip through it just to sort of refresh myself. Right. And, and like, it was sort of a thing, have I read this? Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I have. Uh, uh, but I still don't know, like, who half of these new characters <laughs> that were introduced are. And, like, I'm not entirely sure who everyone is yet. And, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, uh, I finished reading fourteen and uh started reading fifteen yesterday, so that's cool. Yeah. You still got two whole or two whole volumes as of Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. I, I finally watched all of season two uh yeah. of the yeah. show. Really good. I love the way it like changed pace there. I mean like I it w- it didn't bother me at all how slow the first few episodes of the season right. two were, but it was it was cool to see it like kick into a different gear, right? Yeah, I think like, I think we talked about this a little bit. Uh, like you know when it was out, you know like being broadcast, you know on television. Uh, I read a lot of complaints about people just hating that show, uh, but you know uh, like I watched it all in like the span of like you know four days, right? So like the pacing didn't bother me because I'm watching it in such big chunks. Yeah, it really does work pretty effectively that way i you know i i i kind of like i think i watched it perfectly too because i watched like the first two episodes of season two and then i waited like a week and watched a couple more and waited a week and then like by the time like the pace was quickening i was like i had them all at my house instead of at kathleen's so i watched them all like in succession so it was like as the pace of the show picked up so did the rate at which i watched them so it was yeah it kind of built real real well that way yeah um, man, that's pretty much just about it. Um, and we got uh, Thanksgiving coming up, uh, so you got your plans with Doogie. Yeah. But uh, I think we talked a little bit last week about, you know, anything going on. Or you uh, said, Ty, I think you mentioned you get to see your brother one last time before the, yeah. the holiday rush. I hope so. Yeah, yeah, I hope I get to see him. Him and uh, my cousin will probably be over and... Doogie, so yeah, yeah. my nice little intimate uh, Thanksgiving yeah. should be good. I, uh, I got an email last night that uh, infuriated me. No, oh. uh, so I think like I, I signed a petition once online, and so now I get like <laughs> these occasional emails saying, "Hey, please sign this petition," and the one I got last night. Was uh, it wasn't to do with Dave Sim and misogyny? No, no. <laughs> uh, no, the one I got last night was worse. Uh, 
It was uh, a petition that some woman started because uh, she works at Target and because Target is opening on Christmas night for for Black Friday sales, uh, she wants Target to close all their stores on Thanksgiving Day uh, so that you know their employees can spend time with their families uh, on that day and you know not worry about like you know all these Black Friday deals. And whatever. Right. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck every single one of you who is signing that goddamn petition. Fuck every single employee at Target. Fuck you. Really? Yeah. My neighbor works at Target. Yeah, good. Go to work. <laughs> oh, yeah, she said she's working like yeah, 10 good. hours that day. Don't fucking complain. If you want to complain, quit your goddamn job. Well, I know I wouldn't want to work on Thanksgiving. Nobody wants to work on Thanksgiving. But sometimes you have to. I worked at a movie theater. I worked yeah. at two hotels. I worked at Kinko's. And I worked at a TV station. Guess what? Didn't have a fucking holiday off for ten years. Uh, but, I mean, that wasn't fun, though, right? I don't care. I had a job. <laughs> I got paid. I got paid overtime. Well, if they pay you well, like one of my buddies is working at uh, the Boston Stoker at the airport on Thanksgiving Day. Yeah. And he said he gets, the for an eight-hour shift, he gets paid the equivalent of, of usual 32-hour uh, shift. Yeah. He's pretty stoked about that. Yeah. He's Boston stoked about that. Fuck yeah, he is. <laughs> but but I mean, if you're and just if working, he's not, quit. If you're not working for like, if you're just working for your regular wage, that, is, eh, I would, that would suck. I don't think they can legally do that uh, uh, unless you're part time. Oh, okay. Uh, if you're part time, then yeah, you'll you'll probably just get paid your regular wage. But guess what? Quit if you don't like it. No. Don't work at a place that you know is going to be open uh, on a holiday. And I worked at places that not only were open every holiday, but 24 hours a day, right. seven days a week. See, but I think, like, hospitals and whatnot, you're like, yeah, duh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work. But it's like, why Why are they, you know, why are they open, you know? Why hospitals are open? No, no, like, why is Target open on Thanksgiving? Like Because it's their, because they can open and close whenever the fuck they want. Yeah, but I mean, that is kind of crappy. Dude, who cares? If you work a retail job, suck it up and deal with it. <laughs> Or get another job. <laughs> Count yourself lucky if you work at a retail job that closes on a holiday. Yeah, yeah, our, ours none is. None of them have. Uh, none of them have to. I mean, Mavericks is pretty small, but yeah, yeah we're closed on Thanksgiving. So. But you know, like I said, I have worked like every place that I worked from the ages of sixteen through twenty-six uh, have all been places where. They're always open. Right. Always. Never once did I ever complain. Because also sometimes, you know, guess what? I don't want to spend the entire day with my family. Right. Because right. that gets really fucking boring sometimes. Yeah, but I mean, it, it would suck for, like, families who, you know, they they want to get together on Thanksgiving and they can't because they're stuck at their job. Yeah. I, so I, I mean, I'm kind of I'm leaning with the... I mean, I'm not going to go sign that petition or anything, but I, I kind of see their... They're see not there 24 point. hours a day, working at a six- to eight-hour shift, and then they get to go home. <laughs> right. Who cares? <laughs> eh. Yeah, fuck those people. <laughs> fuck every single person <laughs> signing that petition. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if Dave Sims signed that petition. He should have. Yeah. Because <laughs> then he can go doubly fuck himself. Hmm. For being a misogynist, lazy person. <laughs> oh. So happy holidays, everybody. Happy holidays. <laughs> That's basically what we're saying. Yeah. Hey, if you have that day off, good for you. Enjoy it. Enjoy yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Spend that time with your family if you want. Spend that time alone if you want. Mm -hmm. I would love to spend a holiday alone someday. Uh, maybe not this year, but uh, in a future year. Yeah. Uh, actually, I kind of don't go to my parents this year but just because of that thing i talked about earlier that i don't really want to talk about right uh but yes yeah, you know what i it just i like the fact that my current job allows me to have holiday off and, and get paid for that oh yeah that's great yeah it's awesome but you know it, it took me 10 years to get to that point <laughs> yeah 
The only time I ever got a holiday off previous is just if it happened to fall on like a Tuesday or Wednesday, which were my normal days off. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I'm lucky enough that Thursday's my day off anyway, but. Right. Um, yeah, we put up the sign yesterday that we're closed and l- without even talking to Jack. Yeah. And I started thinking, I was like, wow, are we closed? I wonder. Because, I mean, we've been open on, we've been open on Christmas before. Right. I mean, we've been open any day, you know. So, but yeah, when I, I came in today, I was like, oh yeah, we put up that sign and, you know, and I noticed it was still on the door. He yeah. didn't turn it down. And he's like, oh yeah, that's fine. We're closed and things good. I was like, oh, gosh. That's good. Yeah, I would, uh, if I knew that there wouldn't be any magic people there, I would totally uh, go hang out at a Mavericks. Oh, holiday. they'll be there. I know. They'll probably be there anyway, even though, you know, they the all know. Because Thursday's gaming night, so oh, it's, yeah. it's going to be like a zombie movie. There's going to be like, you know. Pounding on the door. Yeah. 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 Moaning. <laughs> <laughs> Chase the moaning sculptor. Yeah. <laughs> Baraska. <laughs> Uh, no magic ruining holidays everywhere. <laughs> Every day would be a holiday if there was no magic uh, together. Maybe I'm going to start a petition. Yeah. And uh, get a magic banned for being uh, a thing. Oh, we should get some kid to, like, kill himself and leave a note that says, like, you know, magic oh, yeah. together and get it. And then get the, clutching some magic cards. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that'd be great. Get some, some like, foil Republicans involved. <laughs> It'll be awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we we don't really want people to die, but, uh, unless they play magic. Unless they play magic, yeah. <laughs> legitimately. Yeah. Uh, all right. I guess I should pick uh, a comic book for us to read, and uh, we both like reading comic books. We do, and uh, we're gonna have to to read one for the next show. So might as well. Pick the one that we're going to do, right? That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh... <clears throat> so this comic book that I'm picking is, uh... It's... And I'm sure we'll, we'll get more into it uh, when, when we actually do the review, but it's a comic that uh, came out a very long time ago as a 24-page comic. And then last year came out again as a 100-plus page graphic novel. Oh, wow. And it is a story about friendship. Oh, oh, that sounds heartwarming. Yeah. It is called My Friend Dahmer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very heartwarming. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's It's ironic because, I don't know if you remember, but there's also, uh, there was a man with the last name Dahmer who killed a bunch of people in the 90s. Uh-huh. Um, so that's ironic. Uh, I don't think that's ironic. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> uh, mostly because they're the same guy. That's awesome. And also, I don't think that falls into the ironic category. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, at all. you know, a story about friendship, you wouldn't think of a serial killer, really. Oh, well, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe, well, I mean, he lured all those people to his house by pretending to be their friends. Well, that's true. And then killed them and ate them partially. So is the the man that wrote the book, was he half-eaten? Uh, no. Yeah. No, he was not. <laughs> okay, well, that's good. No. Well, at least I don't think so. Well, I'll have uh, to read the book to find out, I, I guess. guess so, yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, My Friend Dahmer by Durf. Well, he's only got half a name, so well, that's true. Dahmer ain't half his yeah. name. <laughs> I think he has a full name. It's Durf Back Durf. Oh, is it? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> huh. No, that's ironic. Yeah, it is a, uh, it's an autobiographical comic. <laughs> I love reading those. <laughs> About a guy who was once friends with Jeffrey Dahmer, the serial <laughs> killer. You know, actually, it's funny, when you brought up autobiographical comics, it reminded me, this morning I was driving to work, and I was listening to uh, Why So, the New okay. Public Radio, and I laughed out loud, because they were, like, when I turned on the radio, they were like, comics like it's like the first word i heard and i was like what and they were talking about siegel and schuster okay and then they and then they like talked about uh jeff smith and harvey picard and uh Some ohio comics. yeah yeah they were just talking about ohio and uh, i was like wow this is neat and they were like, but when they started talking about harvey picard i remember i was like at a at a stoplight like you know like waiting for my time to turn and uh 
and they were like, they're like, yeah, and uh, you know, he pioneered this, you know, this this genre, like in the, you know, like 1976 to begin American Splendor, and and they're like, you know, he he started doing these autobiographical comics, which are all the rage today, and I was like, ha! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, we can't stop selling those things nope. at Mavericks. All the rage. Yeah. I mean, every time I go to, you know, some of these gossip and rumor sites, it's all about, you know, what cartoonist is, you know, working on their autobiographical comic. And, yeah. Uh, people arguing about which autobiographical comics are the best. <laughs> and, you know, can... Uh, I can't believe, like, uh, that that cover has uh, uh, that autobiographical character twisted in such a way. Right, yeah, yeah. Or, you know... Just, just these stupid arguments, like can Jeffrey Brown beat up James Kachalka? <laughs> yeah, you know, of just, course he can. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! And all these autobiographical crossovers. <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Even. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> never mind. Yeah, we're, we're done. <laughs> Yeah, I gotta go home and count all the money I've made on my autobiographical <laughs> comics this week. I gotta get those royalty checks cashed. They're just rolling in. <laughs> all right then. Well, we'll uh, we'll be back next week with Durf. Durf. Dr. Ah, Dahmer. Goodbye. <laughs>